The following is distributed by the Berean Call. Chapter 6 The New Age Movement A new kind of revolution is quietly taking over planet Earth. Unlike the Russian Revolution and other violent uprisings that installed new governments in the past, this revolution will conquer without guns. As New Age movement leaders would say, quote, the new politics is involved more with getting in touch with our quote-unquote higher self, more with mysticism than violence, unquote. It is a quote-unquote conscious revolution that is preparing planet Earth to recognize and receive the coming world ruler whom the Bible calls the Antichrist. Rejecting biblical prophecies and the whole idea of an antichrist, H.G. Wells saw the consciousness revolution as something good, a positive and open conspiracy that would save the world from destruction. In this connection, he made another startling prediction, quote, The open conspiracy is the natural inheritor of socialist and communist enthusiasms. It may be in control of Moscow before it is in control of New York, unquote. We will discover later why this seemingly incredible prediction by Wells makes sense. First of all, however, it is necessary to understand that the coming New World Order is actually a religion, though it often wears a political mask. Its millions of sincere participants have adopted an ecumenical faith that will form the basis of the coming world religion, belief in the oneness of all life and in themselves as part of the universal self or consciousness. They fervently believe that an awakening of brotherhood and love will usher in a new age of peace, prosperity, and incredible progress. As evidence of this, they point to a new and worldwide phenomenon that was first ignited by the drug culture and then expanded through the spread of Eastern meditation techniques in the West, the emergence of a new quote-unquote planetary consciousness in human beings. As Mark Satin has said, quote, Planetary consciousness recognizes our oneness with all life everywhere and with the planet, the interdependence of all humanity. Planetary consciousness sees each of us as, quote, cells in the body of humanity, unquote, as planetary citizens. We are beginning to see the emergence of a new collective consciousness, unquote. The Aquarian Network Marilyn Ferguson has called this movement the Aquarian Conspiracy. Many others agree with her in identifying the New Age as the Age of Aquarius. New Age thinking involves a new, quote-unquote, openness to one another, to ourselves, to nature, to a universal, quote-unquote, force pervading the whole cosmos, which produces an awakening of unimagined powers of the mind. Playing an important role in the New Age, astrology is based upon a belief in this interconnectedness which determines personality and destiny depending upon the date and location of one's birth in relation to certain heavenly bodies. Like Hinduism, upon which it is based, the Aquarian conspiracy claims to embrace all beliefs, all religions, on the premise that all is one. Dealing with the question, quote, is nuclear war in our future, unquote, New Age astrologer Virginia K. Miller declared, quote, the world is in the midst of a massive upheaval. Many people believe that humankind is on the verge of an evolutionary breakthrough and we are standing on the threshold of a new age. Called the quote-unquote Aquarian Age, it will bring about a new world order in which individuals will realize their true spiritual being and their interconnectedness with all life. To survive as a planet, we must develop the Aquarian consciousness, which recognizes that we are all linked together as members of the human race and as inhabitants of planet Earth. We must network, unquote. Network is a New Age code word that refers not to radio or television, but to the thousands of groups around the world that are all working toward the realization of this, quote-unquote, interconnectedness of all life through the establishment of a world government. Many of these networks expect the United Nations one day to function as the, quote, central nervous system, unquote, in the New World Order. This new planetary consciousness is shared by many leaders who often express their belief in almost mystical terms. Robert Mueller, Secretary of the UN Economic and Social Council, 
and an avid networker, has said, quote, This old planet and the human species on it are like a big brain whose neurons are multiplying incessantly, encompassing everything from the individual to the planet to humanity and the universe. The world brain is already so complicated, new interconnections are being created so rapidly. It is a new biological phenomenon, one of the most momentous ones in the Earth's history. The UN is a system of central universal organs." Unquote. It is this interconnectedness of planetary consciousness that New Age networks express visibly around the world. As the authors of Networking, the first report and directory, declared, quote, We went looking for networks, and we found another America. In the end, we found that we had mapped a significant American subculture with values oriented to human transformation and global peace, unquote. Networks are composed of hundreds and sometimes thousands of groups. There are, quote, New Age caucuses trying to work for New Age-oriented change and transformation from within our already established social, cultural, economic, and professional organizations and institutions, such as the Social Change Network of the Association for Humanistic Psychology, unquote. There are, quote, New Age business and professional organizations, such as the Transpersonal Association, the Holistic Health Organizing Committee, and the Association for World Education. New Age discussion groups are springing up across the country, the Political Science Committee of the Institute for the New Age and New Age Feminism. The Institute for the Study of Conscious Evolution is investigating the relevance of, quote, transpersonal consciousness and conscience, unquote, for the, quote, survival and evolution of the species and the planet, unquote. New Age education groups propagate New Age ethics and values in an almost infinite number of ways. There is the Naropa Institute, the Hunger Project, Planetary Citizens, Movement for a New Society, unquote, and a host of others. The list is almost endless. Planetary Conspirators Marilyn Ferguson, apparently with all seriousness, insists that the New Age movement Quote, is not a new political, religious, or philosophical system. It is a new mind, the ascendance of a startling worldview that gathers into its framework breakthrough science and insights from earliest recorded thought. Unquote. It is hard to imagine how a worldview could be neither philosophical nor religious. In fact, the New Age movement is both. Quote, insights from earliest recorded thought unquote, is a euphemistic way of referring to ancient occultism, the quote-unquote new mind that Ms. Ferguson speaks of comes about through acceptance of basic Hindu philosophy, which is the cement that holds together the otherwise seemingly disparate views of this new world religion. And it is political, for the common goal is a new world order, a world government. The Association for Global Education, Cooperation, and Accreditation declares, quote, only by the birth of global consciousness within each individual can we truly achieve transnationalization, unquote. Such an ambition used to be the private heresy of a secret clique of infamous elitists of the ilk of trilateralists and CFR people. Now it is the declaration of faith of millions in the New Age movement. As the Servers Network has declared, we are indeed witnessing the, quote, emergence of a new universal person and civilization, unquote. The normal loyalty to the nation of one's birth is being overturned in favor of, quote, planetary citizenship, unquote. That this is being advocated by sincere persons under the duress of the dire emergencies we face and in order to save our species from extinction is not doubted. That anyone could deny the political nature of the Aquarian conspiracy, however, is beyond comprehension. Paradoxically, most of the energy, time, and attention expended by those in the New Age movement is directed inward, getting, quote, in touch with themselves, unquote, in order to find out who they really are, getting, quote, in touch with their feelings, unquote. How could this narcissism become the basis for universal brotherhood and global consciousness? It is based upon the experience of, quote, unquote, unity consciousness that comes through drugs or TM and other forms of yoga and Eastern meditation leading to the Hindu belief that Atman, individual soul, is identical with Brahman, universal soul. 
New Age global consciousness and interconnectedness is based to a large extent upon a denial of the Judeo-Christian God of the Bible in exchange for the belief that we are all God. This is ancient Hinduism, yet it is being accepted today as non-religious modern science. By a handful of naive fanatics? No, by millions of well-educated sophisticates. The range and scope and influence of the New Age movement is worldwide and truly awesome. No one lays it out as well as Marilyn Ferguson. Quote, The Aquarian conspirators range across all levels of income and education, school teachers and office workers, famous scientists, government officials and lawmakers, artists and millionaires, taxi drivers and celebrities, leaders in medicine, education, law, psychology. There are legions of conspirators in corporations, universities, and hospitals, on the faculties of public schools, in factories and doctor's offices, in state and federal agencies, on city councils and the White House staff, in state legislatures, in virtually all arenas of policymaking in the country. The conspirators are linked by their inner discoveries, an unlikely kind of conspiracy. Their lives had become revolutions. A personal change began, rethinking everything. They have coalesced into small groups in every town and institution. They have formed what one called, quote, national non-organizations, unquote. Millions of others who have never thought of themselves as part of a conspiracy, but sense that their experiences and their struggle are part of something bigger, a larger social transformation that is increasingly visible if you know where to look. There are tens of thousands of entry points to this conspiracy, unquote. What New Age Movement? Of course, not everyone takes the New Age Movement seriously. Some deny that it even exists. What New Age Movement is a common remark. While almost everyone will have noticed the words New Age appearing with increasing frequency, not many people recognize the coherent pattern involved, and fewer still understand what the words really mean, much less their great importance in shaping the future of humanity and this planet. In fact, many New Agers are scarcely aware of the full implication of their involvement in the movement. And because the movement is more an organism than an organization, many people would vehemently deny they are involved at all. Most people outside the movement who recognize its existence sincerely believe that it is limited to a few visionaries whose impact upon society will be very minimal at most. Nothing could be further from the truth. Suggesting that the New Age movement may in fact exist, quote, largely in Marilyn Ferguson's head, unquote, Stanford University history professor Paul Robinson criticizes her Aquarian conspiracy as, quote, an exercise in mindlessness, unquote, that obliterates, quote, most of what our civilization has achieved, unquote, in its, quote, thoughtless pages, unquote. He accuses her of using a style of thought that, quote, is wholly uncritical, an abdication of the powers of the mind, unquote. If there is such a movement, Robinson condemns it and Ms. Ferguson soundly with this scathing rebuke, quote, to dream of endless transformation is to remain an intellectual child, Ferguson's book and the people it describes betray a psychological immaturity and a contempt for the mind that are truly chilling, unquote. Robinson's harsh judgment is a typical materialist denunciation that recognizes only the rational aspects of the brain and rejects as deception or delusion the apparent paranormal powers of the mind that are axiomatic to New Agers. Considering Robinson's rationalism a hindrance to personal growth and progress, however, the New Age movement is far more concerned with the transpersonal or so-called transcendent powers of the mind, those seemingly supernatural or godlike powers that the yogis, shamans, witch doctors, and voodoo priests have always manifested. Materialistic science has traditionally viewed psychic phenomena with suspicion and skepticism. Within the past few years, however, ESP, psychokinesis, telepathy, clairvoyance, and other such powers have been scientifically demonstrated beyond any reasonable doubt. Therefore, the New Age belief in these, quote, powers of the mind, unquote, simply cannot be dismissed as, quote, unquote, mindlessness in the cavalier manner with which Robinson attempts to write them off. Far from being guilty of, quote, a contempt for the mind, unquote, the New Ager worships mind, convinced by scientific experiment and his own experience that the universe itself is a great mind, 
which his own mind is a part of and can tap into through, quote, altered states of consciousness, unquote. He believes that minds not only can move and bend and otherwise affect physical objects at a distance, but that ultimately he can create his own reality with his mind. In calling this, quote, an abdication of the powers of the mind, unquote, Professor Robinson betrays his own naivete and lack of knowledge concerning the underlying belief system behind the New Age movement. To catalog such beliefs as intellectually childish is to ignore the fact that many of today's most brilliant scientists, including not a few Nobel laureates, are convinced that the New Age view of mind is correct. Their position must be taken seriously, not ridiculed, and the evidence must be examined carefully, which we intend to do. First of all, however, we need to understand that the New Age movement is based upon beliefs that have always been regarded instinctively by the human race as witchcraft and demonic. Whether the old categories of quote-unquote good and evil should now be dropped in the New Age vision of the oneness of all is a question that we will consider carefully. In that regard, we agree with Robinson that Ferguson and other New Agers, while perhaps not wholly uncritical, have been too easily convinced that the mind powers they seek are desirable. In fact, these may not be mind powers at all, at least not the capabilities of human minds. Our contrary scenario proposes an explanation for such powers that has been overlooked or disdained by the New Age movement, yet we expect to show beyond reasonable doubt that it is the only explanation that fits all of the facts. Whether real or imagined, and whatever the explanation, through, quote, altered states of consciousness, unquote, paranormal mind powers have been experienced by millions of people in the West under stimulation of drugs, yoga, hypnosis, Eastern meditation, and so on. These experiences of alleged mind powers seem so real that all of the rational arguments or ridicule of a Paul Robinson have little effect on New Agers. As a result, the Hindu monistic view of reality has become the predominant worldview in the West today. This is true in science, medicine, psychology, sociology, education, politics, and business. It is certainly the case with feminism, which is in the forefront of the New Age movement. The Women's Movement In universities across America, a new group of courses called quote-unquote women's studies has come into existence within the past decade. There are women's studies departments in our colleges and quote-unquote centers for feminist therapy in our cities and suburbs. The national attention that was given to the Equal Rights Amendment and the almost daily publicity concerning women's rights has given women a new confidence in themselves and a new prominence and power in politics. The ERA campaign failed to reach its 1982 goal of an amendment to the United States Constitution, but the major force behind the movement was spiritual, not political, and is still gaining momentum. The women's movement is one of the most important parts of the New Age movement. It is at the heart of the consciousness revolution that is sweeping the Western world. As Fritjof Kapra has said, quote, Now from the earliest times of Chinese culture, the yin was associated with the feminine and the yang with the masculine. Feminists have repeatedly pointed out that the values and attitudes favored by our culture are those of patriarchal cultures. The most severe consequence of this imbalance today is the ever-increasing threat of nuclear war. Like the Cartesian paradigm, patriarchy is now on the decline, and I believe that the rise of feminist awareness is one of the most important aspects of the emerging new vision of reality." Unquote. Closely related to transpersonal psychology, the New Age movement involves, quote, getting in touch with yourself, with your feelings, getting into yourself, finding out who you really are, accepting and loving yourself, getting in tune with your higher self, learning to be yourself, unquote. These are not just catchphrases, but serious goals for those in the movement. And when women, quote, get in touch with themselves, unquote, they find that they are very special, the key to the survival and destiny of our species. Feminine spirituality plays a leading role in New Age transformation of the individual and society. Many of those involved in the feminist movement may sincerely believe it is a political crusade to gain equality with men. In fact, it is more than that. It is also a spiritual movement based partly upon a reawakening of quote-unquote goddess consciousness, and its real goal is matriarchy, not equality. 
One major spiritual force behind some aspects of the feminist movement is witchcraft, which is based upon the power of female sexuality derived from a mystical relationship with Mother Nature and Mother Earth. Take, for example, the Women's Conference held in Southern California during April 24 and 25, 1982. Its title was, quote, Women, the Leading Edge of the New Age, unquote. Declared Linda Barone, the feminist therapist who organized the conference, quote, The New Age will allow us to experience a sense of wholeness, a sense of connectedness with nature, unquote. That is, Mother Nature. Any witch would immediately recognize the significance of that statement. However, for those who don't know that nature religion is witchcraft, the movement often spells it out more clearly. On March 15, 1982, 11 leaders in the women's movement held a planning meeting at the West Los Angeles Center for Feminist Therapy. One of the brochures available that day to be handed out to potential participants in the April conference was from the Universal Goddess Center, Incorporated, and stated, quote, 1982 is the year for revolution in religion, higher education, and new age learning, in which the holistic, interconnected nature of reality is widely recognized and in which women are encouraged to express their new spirituality, which is the oldest on earth." Unquote. As any witch will proudly inform you, the oldest spirituality on earth is Wicca, or witchcraft. Who would suspect that new spirituality means oldest spirituality, or that higher states of consciousness are really lower states, sinking ever deeper within the quote-unquote self? The New Age movement employs words and phrases that seem to mean one thing, but actually means something entirely different to insiders. Self-transcendence is really subsendence. God in the New Age is the pantheistic God of ancient paganism, the all of Hinduism, and not the transcendent God of the Judeo-Christian Bible. Thus, transcendental meditation, which is pure Hinduism posing as science, is a deceptive label that really means the opposite, subsendence, ever deeper into oneself. The quote-unquote new psychic powers being verified in some of our top laboratories today, from Princeton to UCLA, are really the old occult powers that yogis, shamans, witch doctors, and voodoo priests have always exhibited. New Age is a euphemism for old occultism, and this is nowhere seen more clearly than in the quote-unquote new spirituality advocated by many leaders in the women's movement. Goddesses of the New Age a large and typical Women's Spirituality and Healing Conference was held October 22 through 24, 1982, at Los Angeles Valley College in North Hollywood, California. One of the popular seminars that weekend was titled Introduction to Goddess Consciousness and the Craft. One would have to be very naive not to know that the craft is witchcraft. Included in that workshop were discussions of goddess consciousness, nymph, maiden, crone, the Sacred Wheel, Politics of Women's Celebrations, How Do Spells and Rituals Work? Other seminars included Pathways to Your Inner Light, Meet Your Own Spiritual Guides and Discover the Light Within, Harmonize Your Mental, Physical, Emotional, and Spiritual Levels of Beingness Through Hypnosis and Meditation, Medicine Wheel Magic, Quote, You will learn how a medicine wheel can become a valuable spiritual resource for you and how you can build one for your own use, Unquote. How to Enjoy the Present by Experiencing Past and Future Lives Women's Spiritual Journey Loss and Recovery of God Quote, We will explore paradigms for this transformation to wholeness found in the Sumerian myth of the goddess Inanna. Unquote. Female Erotic Power and Orgasmic Responses and In the Beginning Was the Goddess The brochure described this last seminar as follows. Quote, in this workshop, women will discover their own lost heritage by exploring ancient concepts of deity as goddess. Although the great mother goddess was worshipped everywhere in the world for more than 100,000 years before the concept of male gods emerged in human consciousness, she is little known today. More than 200 slides of images of various aspects of the universal goddess will be shown, their psychological and spiritual ramifications for our lives and for our time will be discussed, and the positive benefits of incorporating into our value structure a feminine image of the divine will be explored." Unquote. 
Under the heading, quote, Goddesses of Coming New Age Probe the Meaning of It All, unquote, Los Angeles Times staff writer Elizabeth Mayron reported on the March 1982 gathering of the leaders in the women's movement mentioned above. Among those present was Charlene Spretnik, who declared, quote, Women's spirituality exposes revisionist history and reveals the truth about our past, unquote. As for the future, she said, quote, I believe that women are the teachers in society's transformation into the new age, unquote. Past Lives therapist Jean Whitaker, transpersonal psychologist Jackie Holly, and former cloistered nun Patricia James, now the guru and director of the Awareness Ashram in Echo Park, Los Angeles, were there explaining the importance of the women's movement in the New Age. Martial arts instructor Beth Austin spoke of the, quote, internal balancing of energies, the spiritual, mental, physical, and emotional aspects of self through meditation, unquote. Malka Goldenwolf, founder of the Universal Goddess Center in Malibu, California, and former aide to Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley, declared in no uncertain terms that, quote, the healing of the planet depends upon women, unquote. She explained that through going, quote, deeper into myself, unquote, she discovered the, quote, guru and the teacher and the mother within all of us, unquote. The goals of the movement are pretty well summed up in a recent 590-page book of feminist writings edited by Charlene Spretnik, The Politics of Women's Spirituality, Anchor Books Doubleday, 1982, which a reviewer described in part as follows, quote, the particular brand of spirituality championed in the book as the hope of the world is the ancient goddess worship that characterized a supposedly bygone golden age of matriarchal rule. Goddess worship, paganism, Wicca, and witchcraft are all names for a form of natural religion that is centered around the mystery, sexuality, and psychic abilities of the female. The book is a clarion call to women to regain their natural power and to overthrow the global rule of men. The author's starting point for the reestablishment of female dominance is in bringing an end to Judeo-Christian religion. Unquote. The New Age movement professes a broad-minded openness to all religions, but its basic underlying philosophy represents a careful, calculated undermining of Judeo-Christian beliefs. It bears a remarkable resemblance to the apostate world religion that H.G. Wells claimed as his own and predicted would one day take over the world. It also fits the description of, quote-unquote, the plan for establishing the new world government that is described in various psychic communications from alleged ETs and ascended masters. There is one more connection. The New Age movement fits the description of the Antichrist religion, a rejection of the Judeo-Christian God and the declaration that self is God. All of this seems far too much to be a coincidence. Consequently, our contrary scenario tentatively identifies the New Age movement with the apostasy that the Apostle Paul predicted would immediately precede the Antichrist takeover of the world in a bold rebellion against the Judeo-Christian God and against the moral absolutes which the Bible attributes to him. For this reason, the Antichrist is described in the Bible as, quote, the man of lawlessness, unquote. Since the apostasy is preparing the way for a counterfeit Christ, we would expect it to hide its rebellious antagonism against Judeo-Christian beliefs under a deceptive cloak of euphemisms. In fact, this is one of the most fascinating characteristics of the New Age movement, its use of code words and phrases that sound innocent or even orthodox, but which means something else to insiders. Is this just another coincidence?